Hi, this is Casey from Casey Grandpa Tech, where we talk about tech and fun stuff and much, much more. Some time ago, uh, my local church, we decided to start videotaping and then putting on YouTube our local services, and then we decided to live stream. But unfortunately, much of the information that was needed to, to actually do that wasn't really readily, readily available. Of course, now with COVID-19, everybody's forced to live stream in one way or another. So today in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to do live stream at your local church. And I'm going to take you from, from soup to nuts on all the things you're going to need from a camera, a computer, uh, software, and things like that. And I'm going to be talking about a budget, a very simple budget system. Um, you can go with more expensive systems. Um, you can go all out with full production. But we were on a limited budget. So we had to come up with something. So I'm going to be talking to you about that right now. Well, today, of course, after much finagling and much learning, today we have our system is pretty much set up on a Sunday morning. Uh, we have it working pretty well. And uh, we have multiple cameras and we have everything running. But it wasn't always that way. And you can see this is my computer screen here. And in there, you can see that I have OBS opened, and I have uh, Google Chrome, and I have a second monitor for our Bible program. But it isn't that easy to get started. So I'm going to talk to you about what things you're going to need, some selection of cameras, and tools that you could use to get it started for a reasonable amount of cost. Because if you're like, if you're whether you're a full-size church, or you're a nude start church, or you're just doing meetings, or you're just doing whatever you're doing, it's a situation trying to come up with a cost savings plan and still get the high quality that you can. So, the question, the first question that you must ask yourself is, what, on what platform are you going to live stream to? Whether it be YouTube or Facebook, whatever it happens to be. And realize, of course, that each platform has its physical limitations on what you can actually display at. For instance, in uh, with Facebook, um, they display at 720 DPI. What does that mean? Is that basically that you're going to be live streaming at 1080 DPI. Now, YouTube has two settings, and, and you can do that setting at 1080 DPI, but you also might be able to bring it up to an HD quality. So that will affect the cost of what the cameras you get and the things that you do. The second thing that you have to realize, okay, is that your internet speed. I can't express to you how much importance that is. Because before you begin, you must know what internet speed you have. Um, and most people don't know. Um, you can you can basically do that by doing a speed test and it'll tell you but you you know whether you have Comcast Verizon or whatever it happens to be you have to realize that for a good live stream you need to be going out at 10 megabytes per second and unfortunately some ca cable companies while they'll have a gigabyte speed going out the the uh, downloading the actual upload speeds are very very slow and that's going to affect your live stream in a big, big way. The other thing you have to realize, of course, is that you, whether or not you want to have other people to be able to be on the internet at the same time you're live streaming. One of the pro early problems that we had and didn't realize is that we only had 150 megabytes per second. But the problem that we started having is a lot of people had the, the password to the um, internet. So what would happen during the church service, people would get on their phones and start commenting at the live stream. And that was causing collisions and that was causing all kinds of problems because it started bringing our, our stream down. So one of the things you want to immediately consider, of course, is that you do not give out your password to your internet that you're going to be using for your live stream. The other thing you want to realize is that whether you're going to go Wi-Fi or you're going to go hardwired. Now we hardwired, and I'll tell you why. One of the problems with Wi-Fi is that 
you can have what are known as collisions. And the other thing is, a lot of cable companies are going to split your bandwidth. What do I mean? Usually a lot of the companies have two speeds, 2.4 and 5. And what they do is, let's say you have an upload speed of 10 megabytes per second. Well, they split that. So you've got 5 and 5. All right. So now you're limited to your speed that you're uploading down to 5 megabytes per second, Okay, no matter what you do. And of course you want to select the higher speed. So now the question comes into now if anybody else in the church is going to use that higher bandwidth, now you went from five to four to three to two. And if you're already ha if you already have a live stream, you probably have noticed that you get knocked off. All of a sudden you get the spiral, that little wonderful clock thing moving. That's what's causing it. You need to keep people off. All right. So the best way to handle that is to is to run a Cat5 or a Cat6 Y directly from the modem directly to the computer that's running your live stream. So that being done, let me talk about all the things you're going to need. By the way, if I haven't asked you already, don't forget to please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I will at the end when I've gone over the all the equipment. Actually, take a camera, hook it up, and show you. The basically how to do it. So let's talk about camera equipment. Now, depending upon your budget, you, you know you can spend anywhere from three hundred to four thousand dollars on a camera. Uh, obviously, at our church, we were new. We didn't have the funds to buy, start spending a lot of money, but we still wanted a high quality image. So what I found with two two very basic cameras, that one was by Ordero, and one and then the Canon. HX80 or 800, both are good cameras. Uh, both of them will give you a high quality image. But most importantly, that any camera you decide, choose to use must have a clean HDMI output. And what does that mean, basically? For instance, in this camera here, on the back is where you would hook up the HDMI cable. And also it has a plug-in for a power supply. Because if you're going to be running the camera, you want to be able to keep it powered at all time. Otherwise, you'll be on battery. Once the battery dies, your service ends until you change the battery. The other thing is, uh, again, H has clean HDMI. Now, like on the Ordero, um, there's a button on the side that says display. So all those little icons on your display, uh, you press the display button once and they go away. Uh, in the Canon, it's a little bit different, but basically you have to go into the menu and turn off that. But that is simply, you know, basically you're going to hook up to the HDMI cable out, and where you, what you connect it to next is, after you've connected the, got you decided on what camera you've got, and you know how you have a clean HDMI output, you're going to connect the cable, but you're going to need a video capture card. Uh, and there are many out there. The standard for a long time was by Camlink. And uh, they make a very good Camlink one. But there are other ones now on the brand that basically can do a very similar job depending upon the quality you want. Um, up on the left-hand corner there, you see uh, an HDMI ca video capture card. That uh, varies in price, anywhere from $19 to $40, depending upon whether or not it includes a, um, an extension cable to plug into the computer. Now, that one only, unfortunately, will only display, is, an H, is a USB 2.0, and it'll only display a resolution rate of 1080p. But if you want to go higher than that, you're going to need something a little bit more more powerful and that could be the cam link 4k uh looks looks just like it but it has a more higher ability now the other thing you have to realize is computer resources now there's another company that's competing with um cam link and that's by zazluk um i did a full review on these two products um and basically what you're going to do is you're going to plug one end into your computer uh, USB 3.0 if you're using the Zanz Luke or the uh, Camlink, 
or 2.0 if you're going to be using the um, the less expensive one and then you're going to input to it from the camera um, you can then uh, one is a direct capture directly goes from the camera directly into the computer another one has an H DMI out which you could connect to a net monitor the Zaz look also has the ability for you to hook up earphones and uh, a microphone to it again you have to see what your needs are and the quality of which you wish to go at the Zaz look claims that it can go out at um, 4k at 20 megahertz so you have to decide what is going to be good for you now you need to discuss about what you're going to connect it to now you have to decide on the PC, whether it's going to be a laptop, desktop, really doesn't matter. Although the desktop does give you ability to expand more. Now the other thing you have to realize, of course, now I have Camlink specs up, but basically, really they all are around the same. Um, you're going to need to have, whether it be a Macintosh or a Windows-based PC, an Intel 5 processor or above, and at least a 4700 uh, processor. Now, they come... I, Intel started making all these different processor models, so they have Intel 54700, 5700, 6600, and above. And whether you're using a Macintosh or an Apple, um, it's up to you. I personally like the Windows version, and I'll tell you why. $1,500. Both of them will do the job, but it's $1,500 difference. And when you're on a budget, Windows machine makes more sense, to me, at least. The other thing is, of course, if you're going to buy an Apple, you have to put it in the budget for repairs. Eventually, the hard drive is going to fail. Eventually, something's going to go wrong. A, a regular PC, um, an Apple is going to cost you up to four times more expensive to repair it. That's my personal um, beef on it because they're both the same machine. They both use a motherboard, they both use a hard drive, but it basically the difference is the operating system and the expense to repair it or buy it. Now, that being said, the other thing is that you want to decide is you want to look at the amount of RAM in the PC. And I did a whole video on this. You can check it out on how to set up a, your gaming PC and what you should select. You need at least a, a minimum eight gigabytes of RAM preferably 16 but at least eight the other thing is you want to look at the seat the video chip that's in it some uh, computers have integrated some have an external you want to have an external uh, you want to it's preferred that you have an external you can use an internal uh, the reason why an external whether it be in the laptop or that is that you can have it has more beef more power and more processing time Okay, everything is going to make it easier for you when, as you're doing video editing and things like that. So, we've gone over the basics. Let me get into hooking it up. Now, of course, one of the things, now that you've gotten everything together that you need to, to get it connected, uh, but now, whatever computer you've chosen to use, you need to download a video editing or video capture software of some type. Now, I happen to use OBS, and OBS is open broadcasting software. We've been using it in the church for several years. It's free, and of course, you can donate to the program, makes it the program better. So, um, once you've done that, you'll need to learn how to use OBS, and that's a separate course on how to set up scenes and things like that. But, let me go into how to do that right now. Now, um... Over here I have the the file for OBS and it's open. All right, and um, and I'm hoping you're able to capture this. I'm gonna the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pro plug in the video capture device. All right, and it will discover it, and then you'll have to come over here and add. A video capture device now um, I have several devices which I use but we're gonna we're gonna say add existing and we're gonna find it and that'll be this one 
and you can see there is no it's showing up there's no image on it um, but now you've that's as simple as it is to program it into OBS now as I told you before you turn on your camera and go in there and turn off two things auto power power off and you turn off the display option uh, and if those of you who don't know how I can give you show you a little bit but I'm gonna plug it into the HDMI out and right now I am displaying from the camera okay to in through the HDMI video capture card directly into OBS in which case I would be able to record now of course we haven't talked about adding audio or anything else like that but I just happen to put it up against the wall that you can see um, and with that I'll be able to zoom and all of that so this is very very simple uh, basic understanding of how to connect a video capture card to your computer um, let me get into some thoughts right now so it isn't that difficult to set up a church video basically you're going to need to get a video camera um, they range anywhere from two hundred to four thousand uh, dollars you need one with an H clean HDMI output okay and which means that you can turn off the little icons on it all right um, when you set up your camera you will need to turn off auto power off and the other thing you will need to turn off is the display icons um, on the Ortero it's on the outside the button and inside of the Canon it's on the inside the menu from there you'll need to take a, your video cable connected to some type of video capture device I've shown you an inexpensive one uh, from they range from 19 to 40 dollars uh, the next level up would be like the Zaz Luke, which allows you more features, which allows you to have a display through uh, and connect audio to it. And then the last one, of course, would be the Cam Link. Cam Link, of course, is your golden standard uh, video capture card. And they have it external and they have it internal. Um, both are working. Um, personally, right now, uh, we had the Cam Link on our church and it failed um, after a couple years and unfortunate unfortunately and uh, I happen to have the $19 one available so I plug that in and guess what we've been doing our live broadcast with that for some time now I never switched it back um, and then no reason particularly other than we're still outputting at 1080p now the last thing we're going to talk about okay and, and of course I'm talking about the will and we will cover that in another video how to set up OBS how to do that is that in the audio in department on whatever whatever PC you happen to use whether it's a laptop or a desktop and I have a whole video on that uh, also um, when you're plugging in your audio for whatever you're doing a church service or a meeting or whatever you will need some type of filter basic filter if you're going to use a microphone um, let me reach down and get it but it tipped over Um, and I've talked about this in another video basically if you're going to use a microphone you want to have a microphone comes in it goes in through a noise filter or pop filter of some type and directly into the computer now if you're going to be if you're at like a church and you're going to have a, or a, or a, a play or something like that and you can have multiple instruments and multiple music that won't do because unfortunately, in both the comp and, and whether it's a laptop or a desktop, the sound card inside the computer isn't good enough. So what you're going to need to do is have some type of digital converter. Let me show you one that we use. Now what we use is a Foresight Solo, okay? And what that does is gives that converts our signal from the soundboard into the computer's uh, USB socket uh, into a digital format and is able to 
give us uh, excellent sound quality without problems. One of the things that we did notice and we were having a problem with is every time we started hooking up, you know, the piano and we had the key, the, the, the drums and everything else, we started getting problems with distortion. So one of our sound people recommended that we put this in. That's a four side solo. Um, and it's hooked up directly to the soundboard. Um, and from output from the soundboard goes into that. And then what we can do is we can adjust the gain on it to get the best, um, best sound and best control. So those are some things you can look into when you're setting up things. Um, and all in all, the bottom line is that you can... This is a very simple, like I said, a straightforward and easy way to hook up a sound uh, digital system to your computer. I, I hope this has been helpful for you. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I have a, we have I have multiple videos out on the the foresight. I have it on the cameras. I have it on the uh, various parts that make this up. How, what components to choose when you're doing this. Um, but a lot of people have been asking me, Ken, how do you just, how do you hook this up? And it's really simple. Into the camera, through a video capture device, into the computer. Um, and depending upon the type of resolution that you want to be able to output at, you, it'll determine whether you need a regular standard camera or you need a 4K camera. From a 4K camera, you need to go into a 4K capture device. Um, but remember that it doesn't matter how good you capture the information at. It really determines is when you're outputting it to on a live stream, how what service you're using. For instance, like I said, Facebook is 720 DPI. So you can transmit at 4K all you like. It ain't gonna like show. Now, YouTube is a little bit different. You can output at a higher level. They have HD. They do not have 4K yet. So again, if you're displaying at 4K, you really have no uh, no no benefit from it. So again, this this entire package, um, the camera is around 300. The laptop was about 600. All right, um, cables and everything another 100 dollars. Okay, the foresight was 100 dollars. Um, OBS is free. Okay, Windows. Ductility. So really for about eleven hundred, twelve hundred dollars, you'll be able to hook up a basic system. Again, the most important part of course, like I said to you, is your um, internet provider. What does it what are you outputting at? And when you set up the OPS, and I'll, there'll be another video on how to set your OBS out, when you do your run your wizard, whatever it decides that the your best settings are, make them lower. So if it and you'll understand what I'm talking about when we go into that that section, but make it a little bit lower, okay? And the reason being very simple of that is that it's taking best conditions, and you want to go a little bit lower on your resolution, a little bit lower on your auto bit rate, because you don't know. Because if, like I said, as other people start getting on the internet and start having collisions with you, you're going to notice that your bandwidth's going to drop, and you might start having problems. So I hope again, I hope this is I hope this has been helpful for you. And until next time, this is Casey from Casey Grandpa Tech Out.